Will Nigeria's latest rate hike be enough to tackle inflation or will it just squeeze businesses and consumers even harder? Good morning. It's another power-packed episode of Business Week. Today, a revelation on Senegal's debt and deficit sends its sovereign bonds tumbling. Zambia reaches a deal with Chinese creditors while Argentina's poverty rate rises under Javier Millet. In Nigeria, we take a look at the impact of the CBN's latest rate hike and also look at rate hikes around the world while Kenyan courts Abu Dhabi in Ruto's latest bid to attract much-needed funding. I'm Rolake Akikubefolani, helping you catch up as always. If you couldn't keep up, stay tuned. As always, we'll start with a look at global energy commodities. Brent and all the other major crude grades ended the week on a high, thanks no less to a Chinese stimulus package by the Chinese bank, injecting liquidity into the banking sector and, of course, raising hopes of robust demand for oil. China, of course, being one of the world's biggest oil importers. So Brent was up at the last day of trading on Friday by 0.68%. WTI crude in North America followed as well. Natural gas and RBOB gasoline all looking robust. But let's not forget that prices have actually fallen in the last couple of weeks. Let's take a look at equity markets around the world. We'll start, of course, here right at home with Nigeria. What's going on with the All Share Index? Well, not too bad an outlook at the end of the week. Almost flat there on the All Share Index, which ended the week at 98,458.68 points. Uh, over 7,000 deals, a fair amount of shares traded with a value of 6.65 billion naira and market capitalization ending at 56.5 trillion naira. What's happening in Africa? Let's look at the major Africa indices. We'll start, of course, with Johannesburg in South Africa. The stock exchange index was up by 29 basis points. Accra in Ghana was down by 0.37 percent. And Nairobi was up almost flattish by 0.05 percent. And of course, Casablanca in Morocco ending the week at 14,449 to close up at 0.55 percent. Let's take a look at Europe. Yes, the major European indices, Eurostock 600 was up. Good news all around for the major European countries because, of course, the ECB has entered, a, well, a cycle of monetary easing, one would hope. Uh, Eurostock 600 was up by 0.47%. London FTSE share index was up by 0.43 and DAX in Germany and France, CAC 40 in Paris were also up. DAX actually in Germany up by a whopping 1.22%. Now for my top picks from around the world. The first major story I chose here was Argentina. Javier Mele came in on a high last year in 2023 when inflation in Argentina was at about 300%. Just imagine that. He introduced a stream of liberal reforms, but what has happened is about 3.4 million Argentinas have fallen into the poverty trap, with poverty up above 50%. Hard times there in the Argentinian economy. Of course, his policies were a departure from the previous uh, socialist government, but having mixed results here, and we hear that his popularity ratings have also dipped. So we'll be watching those developments closely in Argentina. And of course, in Africa, an interesting development, because five African countries around the Indian Ocean, so mostly Southern and East Africa, may be pioneering what is known as a debt for nature swap. And the idea behind this financing facility is to help protect the ecosystem around biodiversity. So you have countries like the Seashells, Mauritius, Comoros, South Africa, even Tanzania, all along the coast, all bordering the Indian Ocean, who could be entering a debt for nature uh, swap program to help them get cheaper debt to protect their coral reefs and their biodiversity ecosystems. It's not the first time that sort of structure for debt has been tried. Countries like Ecuador, Belize, Barbados have actually explored this in the past. But this is the first time a multi-country group from Africa will be taking part in this financing package. Now, this idea was first mooted back in 2029 by the US and several European countries to give up to $2 billion worth of loans to help protect 
ecosystems around the world facing the scourge of climate change and other global development challenges. So these African countries now face a real opportunity to tap into the facility. It's known as a debt for nature uh, swap deal, which will give them cheaper sources of funding to protect the environment. Good news there for those countries, obviously. Senegal's bonds have fallen. Actually, trading during the week, they fell by almost 2%. Now, the big reveal here is that the new Senegalese President Fay, President Fay, launched an audit of state finances, and it was discovered that the previous government had underreported one, the deficit in 2023, which is now thought to be 10 percent and not the 5 percent reported under the previous government, and two, the debt to GDP ratio is actually found to be 76 percent and not the 56 percent reported by the previous government. Now, this is a bit of a bind for Senegal because it has a 1.9 bill out program with the IMF, which it was not able to tap into due to this revelation. Some oil production started in Senegal recently, but those revenue receipts won't be coming till perhaps the next 12 to 18 months. So uh, some real uh, headwinds on the horizon for Senegal here around its debt revelations. And I think that will put a lot of pressure under the new government to help clean up public finances. Again, we'll be following that closely. Still in Africa, Zambia has agreed to restructure about $1.5 billion worth of debt with the Chinese Development Bank and the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. Of course, Zambia had a whole debt crisis post-COVID. It was one of the first African countries to enter troubled waters around its international borrowing. Uh, but these Chinese lenders have now agreed to help the government restructure its debt, which should provide some relief to, to the country. And finally, Turkey has raised a record $3.5 billion international bond, the first ever such international bond of that size. It's a 10-year dollar bond, which is trading about 200 basis points just above the 10-year U.S. Treasury rate. So pretty relatively cheap pricing there for Turkey. We're seeing a lot more interest for Turkey coming in there. And of course, Erdogan is in Unger, the UN General Assembly, courting international support for Turkey's reform program. And this debt deal obviously is a big endorsement of the, go uh, the government's efforts to try and restructure the economy and set it up uh, on the right foot. So good news there for Turkey. Currency reserves going up, uh, inflation stabilizing, the exchange rate has seen some stability at all. That's the type of news we want from emerging and frontier markets. Well, that's it for my top picks for this week.